But we begin tonight with Donald Trump's testimony in E. Jean Carroll's civil case against him over allegations that he raped her in a department store in the 1990s. No, Trump did not actually take the witness stand before both sides rested their cases yesterday. But that did not mean the jury missed out on their chance to hear directly from him. That's because Carroll's lawyer played a large part of Trump's video deposition from last October. And it makes it clear why Trump would do himself no favors by appearing before the jury. Asked about the content of his infamous Access Hollywood video that he later claimed was just locker room talk, Trump appeared to double down on those gross remarks. In this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet, just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the Well, that's what it's, if you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. I, what, what does he mean, unfortunately or fortunately? He also reiterated his claims that the accusation was all a hoax because Carol was, quote, not his type. Even though in the same deposition, he misidentified a picture of Carol for his ex-wife, Marla Maples. It's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which wo woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that? The oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? <laughs> Who is this? Point, wife. And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't Ivana? know. This was the picture. Ivana. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that that's Carol? Because it's very blurry. Yeah, sure. That's right. That's right. I'm sure the picture must have been blurry. Except it actually wasn't. Here's the picture. Here's the picture that Trump was holding that shows him from behind facing Carol and her then husband with Trump's then wife Ivana standing to his right. We have added a picture, helpfully, of Marla Maples to the screen so you can see that they are two different people. It sure does look like Carol fit his type. During the deposition, Trump also went on to insult E. Jean Carroll's lawyer, Roberta Kaplan, saying she wouldn't be his choice either under any circumstances. So I guess she should be relieved that he wouldn't try to rape her, allegedly? Yesterday, before leaving Ireland, where instead of participating in the trial, he was hanging out at his golf resorts, Trump claimed he was returning early to confront his case, even saying he would probably attend the trial. And even though Trump's lawyers rested their case, the judge is giving Trump until 5 p.m. on Sunday to change his mind and take the witness stand. If not, closing arguments are set to begin on Monday. Joining me now is Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney, professor at the University of Alabama Law School, an MSNBC legal analyst, and David K. Johnston, founder of DCReport.org and author of The Big Cheat, How Donald Trump Fleeced America and Enriched Himself and His Family. And David, you've been covering Trump for a long time. One would think he at least knows the difference between Marla Maples, Ivana, and a woman he says... He didn't know her at all, and yet he points to E. Jean Carroll. Let me put the picture up again and says, oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah that's, that's Marla. And it wasn't. What does that say about him? That and the fact that he couldn't remember what year he was married to Ivana, what year he was married to Marla, and wouldn't even ask about, uh, answer about when he was married to his current wife, Melania. And to Donald, all women look alike. It's as simple as that. Uh, they're not human beings. Donald sees all the rest of us as objects. And he's been this way. I've known him for 35 years. Uh, he's been that way from the beginning. And he's very strategic about people he thinks can help or hurt him as a general rule. But, you know, uh, none of us are human beings to him. We're objects to be used. And I'm not the least bit surprised that he could look at a very clearly focused picture of E. Jean Carroll and say, that's Marla. And, and yeah. of course, by the way, E. Jean Carroll, not at 79, but at the time this happened when she was in her early 50s, absolutely his type. So this is just how Donald operates. Donald's mind is a very simple point to it, Joy. If he says it, that makes it so. He creates his own reality. And if you don't buy it, well, fake news. You know, Joyce, but if your whole defense strategy 
is to say that E. Jean Carroll can't remember minute details about that day. What floor were you on? What what time did it happen? Um, you know, and asking her all these minute memory questions, and that is your defense because they're not putting on an active defense. Then when you can't remember basic details in the deposition, that gets played for the jury. Feels to me like that undermines your defense. Well, I think that's right, Joy. I mean, this is about a credibility battle between two witnesses, one of whom did not come to the courthouse, did not sit in the courtroom during the trial, did not testify, and then gave this really lackluster deposition performance. So if you're E. Jean Carroll's attorney, Roberta Kaplan, you are likely very content to play this deposition and to let the jury see for themselves that this is an individual who has a bad memory when it serves him and who, as David says, will not hesitate to make facts up when he needs to do that to get across the reality that he hope exists. It'll be up to the jury to sort that out and, and decide what they believe really happened here. Let me play this because the idea, right, it, it's, it, he sort of testified without testifying because the deposition then basically stands in for his testimony, right? So the judge, uh, you know, presumably to try to make sure that there's nothing left on appeal to say he didn't do, go out of his way to be fair. Let me just read a little bit of a transcript of, of Joe Tacopina, Trump's lawyers, and the, the judge. So this is a sidebar between them. Joe Tacopina, I'm going to rest. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to rest. The judge, I understand. Mr. Tacopina, okay, the court. Uh, and then I may well, it, uh, and then, and that may well prove to be the case, but I will wait and see, Mr. Takapina. And then the court, uh, I'm not implying dishonesty on your part, Takapina. No, I know you're not. I know you're not. I know you're not. But you understand what I am dealing with. And the judge goes on to say, Joyce, that he's going out of his way to run the trial fairly and appropriately and to make sure that both sides have a fully fair trial. Do you read that as the judge saying, you're not going to try to catch me on appeal and say you didn't get every opportunity to testify? Because he's literally in Europe the couple of days ago saying, I'm going to come back and face my accuser. But yet his lawyer says, no, he's not. Right. I think this is the judge making every effort to hold Trump accountable. Look, this is how it works in a civil case. E. Jean Carroll could have subpoenaed Trump to testify. Her lawyers chose not to, I think likely because the deposition testimony is just so startlingly good for them. Yeah. Trump can voluntarily choose to testify if he wants to. He did not. He relinquished that right. But after he made those comments on the golf course in Ireland, it was almost as though you could see him setting up the future argument. Well, I wanted to testify, but I couldn't. The judge wouldn't let me. I was off on business. And so now here's Judge Kaplan bending over backwards, giving him this last opportunity to cut in and testify and foreclosing for all time Trump's ability to complain about how he was treated in this courtroom. Yeah. And David, you know, he would be a disaster on the witness stand. Let's just be clear. I mean, this is a man whose his defense against the rape charges, they're not my type. He would be a disaster on the stand, right? Well, and there's another place in the deposition where I think he really damns himself. Uh, he says that when E. Jean Carroll went on Anderson Cooper on the other network, CNN, that he described uh, what happened between them as sexy. Well, no. What she said was, people think rape is sexy. It's not. It's awful and it's violent. But what better indication of how Donald turns any word he can to turn truth on its head? And he, he's done this his whole life. I mean, this is a man whose casinos plied sixth, seventh, and eighth graders who had money with liquor and limousines and hotel rooms. Uh, there, there is no moral core here in this man. And the, the, the case putting him on the witness stand, that would be a worse nightmare than Tacopina made clear to Judge Kaplan simply being Trump's lawyer has to be. <laughs> let, let just stay with you just for a second, because it's not just that. So now we now know that there's one, you know, to move on to one of his other many cases in the Mar-a-Lago documents case, he's now got a former staffer testifying or, you know, cooperating. How, how nervous do you think he might be about that, about hiding documents? Oh, Donald's going to be very worried about that. And worse for Donald, he's going to run into something called criminal, criminal procedure rule 43, which grows out of an 1892 Supreme Court case. He was able to skip the E. Jean Carroll trial because it's civil. 
When you're tried criminally in any court in this country, you must be there for every single second of the proceedings. And he may well find he has to campaign for president sitting at the defense table in one of several trials next year.